All right, let's get into it because I'm in a great mood today. Uh, here we go. 30-29. Uh -huh. Chiefs are down 17-0. They've got to be the only team in football that from a fan standpoint, when they are down any amount, you know they're going to come back because the offense is just that good, yeah? I literally felt like this is the scariest team when they're down, period. Like, anytime they're down, it's like you, you, you worry even more because their offense looks – it's quicker, it's more up-tempo, Patrick Mahomes is going to be more off-script. They're just a scary team when they're Yeah, down. it's awesome. Uh, I love watching the Chiefs play. You feel like every time they get the ball, you at least for me, I'm disappointed when they don't score. And I can't figure out why they don't score because I assume they're going to score on every single drive. And the only other team I've ever felt that way about – was Sunday's New York Jets in the second half. Oh, just, God, kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. A couple coaching decisions, though, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Just over seven minutes to go, all right, 30-23. to 23, Kansas City just scored another one of the Kelsey touchdowns. They're up seven. An extra point puts them up eight. Oh, Good job, thank you, Cody. thank you, thank you. I mean, we're adding by ones here, okay? <laughs> they decide to go for two to go up nine. Now, I understand in their minds, they're saying, well, we go up nine to two score a game, Correct. but why not kick the extra point, go up by eight, because then at least you're forcing Vegas to not only score a touchdown, but then also convert a two point conversion. And that's just to tie you. Again, football has become this huge analytics like fiasco, in my opinion. And it's, it, it really isn't that hard. <laughs> just go up eight. You save yourself from even potentially losing the game if it, Correct. If it comes down to eight points or one score. Which, by the way, almost happened. Exactly. So, uh -huh. I mean, for me, it's go for the extra point. It's almost a sure given. But, hey, analytics wins again. Yeah, but analytics doesn't win. I'm glad you brought it up. I mean, some people have trouble adding by one. Perfect. So, that's why you can't expect coaches in the moment to get it always right. <laughs> and here's what I'm bringing up. The situation presented itself last night. 30-23, to 23, Vegas does come back. They score a touchdown, Devontae Adams, his second of the night. Now it's 30-29. to 29. Mm -hmm. Now, this time I, I approved the Vegas Raiders going for two because you want to take the lead. If your defense can make one stop, which they might not have, of course, at least you have the lead, right? If you go into overtime, if you give Kansas City multiple possessions, you're going to lose the game because their offense is just that good. So Vegas does not convert, of course, on their two-point conversion. And then lo and behold, 30-29, to 29, and the Raiders' defense does make a stop, right? <laughs> so the Raiders get the ball back, fourth and one. Okay, fourth and one. We could run the ball. Jacob's having a decent night. A uh, great oh, night. Okay. Or we can put the ball in the hands of our quarterback, fourth and one. We've got Renfro. We've got Devontae, and nice to meet you. Bang! Ugh. Like, what are we doing? It's the biggest play in the game, and they don't know where to run? Yeah, this can't happen. <laughs> I, it just, I, mean, I mean, breaking news. How does that happen? <laughs> it's, I, Hold I, on. I, Look out here. I bang! And these, are, these are two really smart football players. Who I gotta believe? I, obviously, somebody's running the wrong route. You think? Getting, <laughs> you think? I mean, it, it's just it's it's mind blowing that this happens at this junction in the game. Right. At this time. You fourth and one. We need one play, and we can't even run it. And by the way, you're now getting into Kansas City territory. Here come your Raiders. They convert fourth down, get another five or six yards, and bang! They walk away with a W. But no, instead, they collided and boop, and you right down to the ground. And you That's know like, what typically yeah. everybody says? It's your fault. It, no, oh. no. This is the coach. We had a play we liked. Apparently, somebody <laughs> did. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. That's typically the line. We, yeah. we had the play. We call did hear that like. a lot. We heard that in college with uh, AM against uh, Alabama. Yeah. We heard that in the pros yesterday. <laughs> you know, we, we call the play the quarterback really liked. I just don't know why. You know, it works in practice all the time. <laughs> But the big story of last night's game is not just the great comeback from uh, the Kansas City Chiefs or the fact 
that the Raiders are now, sorry uh, there, big guy, yeah. one and four, yeah. uh, because they are. <laughs> of course, they've been hard luck losers. We'll get to that in a second. The big story is what happened last night when Chris Jones decided to touch a quarterback. No. <laughs> yeah. You know oh, yeah. the rules. You're not you allowed to do that. Watch he knows this. they can't touch quarterbacks. Okay, that's a run-of-the-mill strip sack. Yeah. By the way, Jones winds up with the ball. There's nothing illegal about it. There's nothing untoward about it. Unless, of course, you wear the black and white stripes <laughs> of an NFL referee who said that was roughing the quarterback what are we doing, guys? What's going on? So explain it to me, please. I'm going to be honest. I, I really believe that they should have these refs and whoever's on the competition committee as far as putting together the rules try these types of acts. Throw yourself in the air and then try to remove yourself from actually landing on someone. Nothing is touching the ground right now. For Chris Jones. Right. And you don't want him to land on the quarterback. You don't want guys to throw the quarterback. Down. Let them actually do it mm -hmm. and see how challenging it is for them or, to be asking defenders yeah. what not to do. Or you can just do what Isaac Newton did 537 years ago yesterday. Let an apple fall on your head under a tree. You can't stop gravity. <laughs> like, I appreciate what you're saying. It goes like this. Oh, guess what? Every time. It fell. It never stops falling. It's going to keep falling. <laughs> it's called gravity. Blame the moon. Blame the sun. Blame the stars. Blame Copernicus. Blame somebody. <laughs> what do you want Chris Jones to do? He's not a superhero. Gravity works. Gravity never fails. It yeah, fails. Like, what are we doing? Look. Woo. Look. Woo. Oh, that's a nice picture. Yeah, don't, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't throw my phone down. Six All right. times. Meanwhile, after the game, the official, and this is now going to be an ongoing thing, where the, uh, the head referee talks to the pool reporter. This is uh, Carl Schaefer's. He's the referee. My ruling was the defender landed on him with full body weight. The quarterback is protected from being tackled with full body weight. What? He tackled him. What's he supposed to do? He didn't bear hug him. He did not let go. His arms are on both sides. You can watch the video again. He makes the hit. He strips the ball, and then gravity takes over. That's not one of those situations which we have seen where a guy bear hugs a quarterback exactly. and drives, and drives him. Correct. Right? That's full body weight. That's intent to, like, harm. Yeah. Mo and you can, you can argue even that. But what we saw last night, what we saw yesterday or the, Sunday, uh, Sunday with Tom Brady, right? With, with Grady Jarrett, like these plays are guys actually trying to abide by the rules that they have been trying to play within to save a quarterback that they've been taught from day one, go get them. Now, let me be play devil's advocate for a second because I think we have to at least have the conversation here, right? Everyone, the, the entire day, all you're going to hear and see on TV and listen to on the radio are the, is the outrage over, you know, we're, we're not playing, you know, power to puff football. It's tackle football, okay? So just for the sake of having the other side of the conversation, which I think is important, you see uh, NFL players reacting to, and that's what I'm alluding to, everyone and anybody is now going to have a take, and the take is easy, and that is, you know, you got to do better. You know, you know, different weird emojis are coming out. And people are now being critical. <laughs> but here's, let's be fair about it. These same people who are now angry with the NFL that they're overprotecting quarterbacks two weeks ago were yelling and screaming at the NFL that they weren't doing enough to protect quarterbacks, specifically Tua with the two concussions Sunday and Thursday. So you really can't have it both ways. I'm not sure what the middle ground is, but... If you're yelling and screaming two weeks ago that the NFL failed Tua, the NFL overreacted to that criticism because they saw what happened. So now they've clearly instructed the referees, if it's even close, throw the flag and protect the quarterback. And now those same people that were critical of the NFL not protecting the quarterback are now yelling at the NFL for overprotecting the quarterback. Where's the happy medium? Well, th two totally different scenarios, in my opinion. You... you you clearly saw that what Tua was going through 
he needed to be out of the game. Period. Everyone agrees. Period. So it, it's that's just player safety. That's not quarterback. That's not even quarterback. That's anyone. You see them stumbling, shaking their head. You pull them out of the game. Period. You do not let them go back in. Last night. And what we continue to see when it comes to defenders hitting quarterbacks, you're asking them to disregard, almost like lay them down. That is unfair when you're running full <laughs> speed. Like you're literally asking them to, okay, when you get there, just be don't nice. be exactly yeah, be nice. Be nice. Yeah, don't be afraid you, to tuck him in when you're done. Like I'm not yeah. being nice. Do you understand? Like I play well, against guys like Indomitian and Sue. There's nothing nice about this guy. No, when he's on the field. <laughs> including spelling the first name. That's impossible. Uh, that being said, there was an example last night of what you're talking about of being nice. It was Max Crosby. Max Crosby, one of his sacks last night, early in the game. Early in the game. If you guys can show it. Uh, Max Crosby gets a sack against Patrick Mahomes, and he did exactly what you're talking about. Now, the situation's a little different in that he's not chasing from behind, trying to get a strip sack. But Max Crosby basically had an option here. And stands Now watch up. this. He goes in, bang, whistle. Dead, dead play. That's what you're talking about. Let's be nice, right? But the issue that I have with this is if, if Patrick Mahomes gets away, if he eludes this, then Max Crosby is getting yelled at by his teammates, his coaches. Like, get him to the ground. That's what you ha – if, if the it's quarterback – It's impossible, is, in other words, to play defense right now, it's, right? It's, this, is, this is like an anomaly. But if a quarterback lose that, shakes that, because you're trying to do what Max Crosby did, which is great, mm -hmm. it's awesome because it, he, he got blown down. Right. But if he doesn't, if a, a quarter – or if an official isn't quick with the whistle and the quarterback gets away and he loses that – then what it's off or not. Well, here's the rub. Unfortunately, you know, the Chris Jones, a sack of Derek Carr that now doesn't count in the record books because, you know, they blow the whistle, that they throw the flag, rather, uh, marred otherwise what was a great football game. Yeah. And that should be the story that, you know, the Raiders uh, valiantly tried to win a game, but the Chiefs were just too damn good in the second half, and they win the game 30-29. to 29. That should be the story, but no one's going to talk about that today because you have a soapbox issue. You got something that's easy to yell and scream about when you have nothing else to yell and scream about. And we live in a world today when people would rather yell and scream to make a point. Listen to me. I'm the smartest guy in the room as opposed to saying, boy, I got three and a half hours of amazing entertainment last night. I mean, I didn't. I went to bed. But most people, <laughs> most people got, I watch it in nine minutes every morning. Thank you, NFL.com. That should be the story. So the NFL does have an issue on its hands now that it's not the story, that it's just people complaining, complaining, complaining. I will say this. If we're going to protect quarterbacks, and clearly that's where we're going, I do think the NFL also has to pass a motion to protect cameramen. Because what happened at the end of last night's game was egregious. <laughs> and a flag should have been thrown, but the referees were nowhere in sight to protect that poor guy. From Devontae Adams, you big bad bully. Oh, you lost the football game. Maybe keep both feet in bounds on the last play of the game. Oh. How about that? And he's walking into the tunnel, and a guy merely doing his job happens to have the unfortunate mistake of accidentally walking in front of him. So what happens? Out of my way, peon. And that's the problem with you guys. You view us non-athletes as that. As you can just discard us and throw us away. Shame on you. That is shame. Shame on Devontae Adams. And he he did apologize, but this is an not really though. You can't you can you cannot do this. Like no. you just cannot. I don't care how frustrated you are. This guy has absolutely nothing to do with you winning or losing. Get out of game. my way! <laughs> do you know that I was out of bounds? That's my fault that I'm taking it out on you. Yeah, that that like I said, it's inexcusable. I, I would do it to one of our guys, but they could all kick my butt. So I'm not gonna. I'm not. I and thought they, of, I thought about that. Let me demonstrate pushing a cameraman out of the way. But I took stock of me versus them, and that's why I bought them all donuts this morning. <laughs> Hey there, thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.